Yeah. You were Aztec, half Aztec, right? So yeah, my father's side, my heritage is from Mexico City, yeah. Well, now tell us about the Aztecs, because uh, I must admit my knowledge of South American history is not as good as it should be. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, well, we were colonized a long time ago, so a lot of what we should know about ourselves is lost, but I carry on the tradition passed on by my grandfather and my ancestors, passed on to my father, given to me by my name, and through the traditions that but I've they, been they following. But they see, like, we always hear they're warriors. They, yeah. they seem very badass. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I would say so. No, for sure. I definitely consider myself a warrior, so. And a warrior, and you have a... <laughs> And you're a warrior for a great cause, which is the environment. I mean, you're here because you've made a lot of news. First of all, you've made three speeches, right, at the UN? That's correct. Wow, yeah. that's three more than I've made. <laughs> uh, and they were all on the environment? Environment, climate change, my generation, all about right. that, yeah. Yeah, you're 16. Mm -hmm. I, you may be the youngest person on our show. Set in record, that's what's up. Set in record. Right. <laughs> so, you, you, you have this lawsuit. Uh, tell us about the lawsuit. So myself and 20 other youth plaintiffs are coming together and working with an organization to actually work with our judicial system to say that they have, that the, the government has a right, that we have a right to a healthy atmosphere. And they are directly in violation of our public trust and of our constitutional right to a healthy atmosphere. You think atmosphere. they're not doing enough to help you breathe. Exactly. And you think breathing is part of your rights. I say it's pretty important, you know? Right. I mean, it's not specifically in the Constitution, but life, liberty, and life, the pursuit of How, how could you well. have any of those if exactly. you don't have breathing rights? Well, climate change is the defining issue of our time. It's right. the defining issue I of our always, time. It connects I always every say other the same problem. Thing. I always say the same thing. I say, there's every other issue, and then there's that issue. Because yeah. if you don't solve that issue, there are no other exactly. issues. And as an indigenous person, that was always part of their culture, right? Was to, to take care of the earth. Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at before Europe came and kind of messed shit up over here, you know, <laughs> we were doing all right, living in balance with the world. And so I guess taking those principles and taking those understandings that were passed on to me and working with technology innovation and what this, you know, new generation, like my generation is more innovative and have more entrepreneurs than ever before. So we can really work together to build a new world by calling out our leaders and well, reminding them they're not doing the job that they're put here to do. But. <laughs> But let's not, uh, let's not pretend you are typical of your generation. Uh, how many of your generation would give up their iPhone? Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna answer that. No, I mean, no, I mean, you, you know, it's not just teenagers. Yeah. I mean, people in their 20s don't, yeah. don't vote as much as they should. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a part of youth. I mean, you have too many hormones. It, it's, <laughs> no. Too many hormones, and you can get fucked up too easily without it hurting you. Yeah. Those... I... I know from wherever I speak. Yeah. Because yeah, well, I think... Well, I mean, part of that, too, is that, sh like, we're young, and technology has pulled our attention away from the world in a lot of ways because... Right. Our generation is being bombarded with media that's showing us that it's over. You know, climate change is the greatest issue of our time. We have politicians that aren't supporting, you know, our survival. And there's so many problems all over the world. Everywhere we look, there's more crises. And there's no way for our voices to be used to create solutions. So young people are searching for that. There's no outlet for us to engage in a world that is stacked against us. We're dis systemically disempowered from the time that we're born. So this generation, what I've seen personally traveling around the world, and talking to more and more of my generation is that young people are ready to use their art, their poetry, their passion, their music to engage with the world and be leaders today. Because, you know, sure, we're a future generation, but we're here now and we're not gonna wait to make a difference. This is our world.